Imagine you have committed a crime and you know that you're guilty. The punishment for your crime is death. And so you stand before the judge in his courtroom to be sentenced. Your only hope is a mediator. Today, we launch in the book of Daniel, but then we'll get into 1 Timothy. In Daniel chapter 7, Daniel had a vision of the final judgment when we will all stand before the judgment throne of God. This is extremely important. In Daniel chapter 7, and we're going to start in verse 9, as I looked, thrones were set in place, and the Ancient of Days took his place. His clothing was as white as snow, and the hair of his head was white like wool. His throne was flaming with fire, and its wheels were all ablaze. A river of fire flowed from before him. Thousands upon thousands attended him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated, and the books were open. And that's a vision that God gave to Daniel. What we need to realize <clears throat> is that we're going to someday stand before the judgment throne of God. All of us will stand before God and give an account of our lives. And Jesus put it this way. He said, you know, you can divide all humankind into two groups, the sheep and the wolves. And Jesus, or the goats, and Jesus said that the sheep will be on his right and the goats will be on the left. And we know that sheep are under attack and that it's difficult to be a true Christian. But we've got to be true to the Lord because in the end, we will give an account. In the end, we will stand before the judgment throne of an all-knowing, holy judge. And his name is Yahweh. Now, in the book of Matthew, Jesus put it like this. He, he said, when the Son of Man comes in his glory, and that's the second coming of Jesus Christ, he says, all the angels will be with him, and the judge will sit on his throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king, or the judge, will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothing, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer the judge, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothing and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? Then the king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for me, one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did it for me. Then the judge will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothing, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. They will also answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothing or sick or in prison and did not help you? And then the judge will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. And then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Now, point number one today, one day we will all stand before the judgment throne of God. It's a simple idea, and a lot of people understand that, yes, we will give an account of our lives, but there are some people that really don't think about it, or they think, well, that's just the Bible, or, well, that's just somebody's opinion. 
But let's be honest for a moment. If that's what's going to happen, we need to prepare for that. We need to give our hearts to the Lord and make sure that we have peace with God because one day we will give an account of our lives to God. And it doesn't matter about good works. It matters about your relationship with God the Father through His Son, Jesus Christ. It's by faith in Christ that we receive our sight. It's believing in Jesus Christ, trusting in Him, because He's the one that paid the penalty for our sins. And we'll talk about Him as a mediator in just a few moments. We all stand guilty before the judgment throne of Almighty God. None of us are perfect. We've all made mistakes. We've all messed up. And we've all sinned against God. And the penalty for sin is death. Ezekiel 18.4 says, The soul that sins is the soul that will die. And all of us stand guilty before God the Judge, who sees all and who knows all. Our only hope is a mediator, someone to stand between us and the judgment throne of God and to help us through this difficult situation. One day, all of us will stand before the judgment throne of God. And we've got to be prepared for that. There's nothing more important that you could prepare for than to stand before the Lord in the end. And somebody will say, well, when will that be? And the answer is, honestly, we don't know. But I can promise you that it's a day closer today than it was yesterday at this same time. We're moving towards the end of history and the final judgment. It may be in a thousand years. It may be 10,000 years. Maybe in a thousand days. Honest, we don't know. But what we do know is that the wise man or the wise woman will prepare to meet God. You're going to spend eternity somewhere. Which are you? Are you one of the sheep that Jesus will place on his right? Or are you one of the goats on the left? And some people say to me, Dave, I'm, I'm not positive that I'm saved. Well, you need to be sure. And God is your Father. He wants you to be sure of your salvation. Repent of your sin. Believe in Jesus Christ. Because we're headed towards a time when all of us will give an account of our lives to God. It's the same principle that we have in accounting. You know, you're, we're headed towards the end of the year and December 31st, the businesses will close their books and then January, February, March, CPAs and accountants, bookkeepers will work on balancing the books for 2010. And they'll show you every penny that came in and they'll show you every penny that came out. This is intelligent bookkeeping. This is intelligent accounting. Well, how much more do we need to prepare to give an accounting of our lives to the one who gave us life? One day, point number one, all of us will stand before the judgment throne of God. Number two, because we have all sinned, we cannot be saved on our own. We need a mediator. The point is we need a mediator. We need a great trial lawyer to stand in the courtroom beside us and defend us and that is the person of Jesus Christ. In the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 2, beginning in verse 1, I urge then, first of all, that requests, prayers, and intercessions, thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all men to be saved. Notice that the judge wants every human soul to be saved. God still loves you. It's not too late. There's still hope. Stay with me. God Almighty, our Savior, who wants all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and there is one mediator, Christ Jesus the Lord, who gave himself as a ransom for all men the testimony given in its proper time. And so what you see here is that Jesus Christ is that trial lawyer, that mediator. He is that attorney, that counselor that comes up beside you at the courtroom and says, I've got your back. Now, if you played sports in high school or played sports in college, you, you think back about your teammates and you remember one guy or one woman who always had your back. They were always there to guard you, to protect you, and to let you know what was going on, to give you a heads up. And we all need that in sports. We all need that in life. 
Maybe it's your wife. Maybe it's your husband. Somebody's got to have your back. Somebody's got to watch over you to make sure that you're okay. And how much more true that becomes at the final judgment throne of God. My dear friend, you can pick up the paper today, look at the news today, turn on the TV news or look at the internet news, and you have to realize very quickly that we live in a fallen world. And this world is out of control. And the reason it's out of control is, is because we've rejected the Word of God. We've rejected the Ten Commandments. We've rejected the Sermon on the Mount. And we've rejected the faith. And so our world is spiraling out of control. And in the end, God will judge. Sheep on the right, goats on the left. Which one are you? And the Bible says very clearly that God still loves you and He wants every person to be saved. We're in 1 Timothy 2, 4. He says that God, our Savior, who wants all men to be saved. And so what he did was he sent us a mediator. Now, this is a pretty rare term in the Greek New Testament. The idea of mediator, you don't see very much. We'll get into that in just a moment. In the Old Testament, the idea of mediator is never explicitly stated. Now, it is implied by Eli, but it's not explicitly stated. I want to go back there for just a moment. Uh, in the uh, book of 1 Samuel, chapter 2, Eli is, is talking to his boys, and, and let me tell you something, uh, preacher's kids aren't always perfect. <laughs> and, uh, and Eli uh, figured that out pretty quick. Uh, Eli's boys, uh, to be honest, were pretty wild. And they were doing some things that they shouldn't have been doing. And so Eli's trying to talk to his boys, and and, and so in, in 1 Samuel, in 1 Samuel chapter 2, beginning in verse 22, Eli, who was very old, heard about everything his sons were doing to all Israel and how they slept with the women who served at the entrance to the tent of meeting. So he, Eli said to them, boys, why do you do such things? I hear from the people about these wicked deeds of yours. No, my sons, it is not a good report that I hear spreading among the Lord's people. If a man sins against man, God may mediate for him. But if a man sins against God, who will mediate for him? His sons, however, didn't listen. And you know what happened to his boys. They crashed and burned. Why did they crash and burn? Because they were fighting God. Did you ever know somebody that's fighting God? And so what I want to say, say to you is that in the end, all of us will stand before the judgment throne of God. And our only hope of salvation is to have a mediator. And that mediator is Jesus Christ, who was fully God, conceived by the Holy Spirit. But he was also fully man, that he was born of the Virgin Mary. Only Jesus Christ was fully God and fully man. And we call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And we know for a fact that Jesus Christ walked on water, turned water into wine, healed the blind. Nobody could do that but God Almighty in the form of a human being. And this is what sets Christianity apart from every other world religion. Only Christianity can give you Christ. And because Jesus Christ was fully God and fully man, he is able to stand at your side in the final judgment and put his hand on your shoulder and look you on in the eye and says, I've got your back. Because the way we're saved is through the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made for us on the cross. He shed his blood and made atonement. Let me put it in English. He paid the penalty in full with interest for all the sins you've ever committed. He served your sentence for you. He died your death on the cross so that you and I, in the final judgment, can stand before the judge of all mankind and be found not guilty in God's court of law. We need a mediator, and only Jesus Christ can do that. And somebody said, David, sounds kind of exclusive. It is. The only way that we're going to get to heaven is through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I, I am the way and the truth and the life. Nobody comes to the Father but by me. And people in the world, 
And people at school will try to tell you that there are many different ways to heaven. And God Almighty says, no, there's one. And that is through my son, Jesus Christ. In the book of Acts, there's a quote from the book of Acts that says, and I'm quoting from the book of Acts, There is one way. There is only one way to heaven. There is no other way of salvation, no other name under heaven by which men are saved, but through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And sometimes we listen to the wrong people and we get the idea that, oh, there's all these different world religions out there and there's a lot of different ways to God. There is one way. Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Acts 4.12. And so we need a mediator. The idea of mediator means, from the New International Dictionary of New Testament Theology, an intermediary or a guarantor. It's a very rare word in the Greek New Testament, mesites. Reinecker and Rogers says a mediator is someone who goes between, one who stands between two parties. The root word of mediator in the New Testament Greek is middle. Someone who stands in the middle. Someone who stands between you and the judge. So in the end, when you stand before the judgment throne of Almighty God, and you will, there is someone there to mediate, for, to stand beside you, to look you in the eye and say, I've got your back. You're going to be okay because you put your trust in Jesus Christ. And let me tell you, you've tried everything else. Give your life to the Lord. You know, it's all about a personal relationship with God, your Father, through His Son, the Mediator, Jesus Christ. And it's a whole new life. The Bible says if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away. The new has come. 2 Corinthians 5.17. You need a mediator because there will come a day when you stand before the judgment throne of God. And that is the final judgment. There's nothing else after that. And some people think, well, at the judgment, I'll talk to God and, and tell him that I'm sorry and I'll, I'll talk my way out of it. No, you won't. Let me tell you something. At the judgment, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's all you're going to be able to say is Jesus Christ is Lord. There will not be any debate, not be any argument because we've all sinned. We cannot be saved on our own. We've, we've got to have a mediator. And that mediator is Jesus Christ. The Bible says the Lord shall judge the ends of the earth. 1 Samuel 2.10. You know who spoke those words? It was a woman. A woman named Hannah. Also from the Bible. For he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness. And the peoples in truth. Psalm 96.13. The Bible says in Acts, he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice. Acts 17, 31. God has set a day. Next week, next month, next year, next millennium. There's a day on God's calendar that is the judgment day. And so often we get busy in life. We're consumed with all the stuff we're doing and all the activities of life and the busyness of this world that we don't stop to think, where are we going? Where will you spend eternity? God loves you. He gave his only son to be mediator for you so that you could be saved from all your sin and have present tense eternal life. But you've got to give your life to him. The Lord will judge his people, says Hebrews. It is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Hebrews 10, 30, 31. One day we will all stand in God's courtroom and Jesus Christ, our mediator, stands between you and the judgment throne. And he says, this is my daughter. This is my son. He is not guilty. All right, what have we said so far? Number one, one day we will all stand before the judgment throne of God. Number two, we can't be saved on our own. It's not about good works. It's not about what you did for the church or, or what you did for PTA. It's all about a personal relationship with the Father through His Son, the Mediator, Jesus Christ. 
Number three, Jesus is the mediator of a new covenant. He shed his blood, gave his body on the cross. Now, in the book of Hebrews, and we're going to start out in um, Hebrews chapter 8, because um, the very few passages in the New Testament use this Greek word mesites, mediator, but Hebrews has uh, three shots at it, and one of them is in um, Hebrews 8, 6, but the ministry that Jesus has received is as superior to theirs as the covenant of which he is a mediator is superior to the old one. Now this book, the Bible, is divided into two sections. The first section is the Old Covenant, or what we call the Old Testament. And the Old Covenant is based on the law. The law says, you shall not, you shall not, you shall not. The New Covenant, or the New Testament, which is about the last one-fourth of the Bible, is based not on the law, but it's based on grace. God loves you. God forgives you. He sent his only son to be mediator for you. And so Jesus Christ is the mediator of a new covenant. He gave his life. He shed his blood and gave his life on the cross. In Hebrews chapter 9, we see the same thing in verse 14, this idea of Christ as mediator. How much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from acts that lead to death, so that we might serve the living God. For this reason, Christ is the mediator of a new covenant. And so we see this idea of mediator just a few times in the New Testament, but three of them are found in Hebrews. The fact that God Almighty loved you so much that he became a human, he came to this earth in the form of a human being. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God. How cool is that? God Almighty became a human being so that he could serve as our mediator, so that we could be found not guilty in the final judgment. And then in Hebrews chapter 12, we see uh, this whole thing again, as Jesus Christ as our mediator, the one who stands beside us at the judgment. He says, you have come to Mount Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all men, to the spirits of righteous men made teleos, to Jesus Christ, the mediator of a new covenant. And so if you're wondering, well, what will happen in the end? Well, in the end, all of us will stand before the judgment throne of God. There are approximately six billion plus people on the earth. Somebody counted them. Right now, about six billion people on the earth. And since the beginning of humankind, scholars tell us that there probably have been about 13 billion people on this earth. And so at the final judgment, every human being will stand before the judgment throne of God. And if you're in Christ, if you believe in Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you will be saved. Jesus Christ is your mediator. But if you haven't accepted Christ, then you're lost eternally. Lost, where will you spend your eternity? This may be the last opportunity. You have to hear the message of salvation, that Christ is your mediator, that he stands between you and, and the judge. And that if you're in Christ, you're found not guilty. And so often people will say in their minds, in their hearts, you know what, I'll make that decision later. You know, at the end of my life, then I'll receive Christ as Savior and, and be saved. But in the meantime, I'm going to do everything that I want to do. My dear friend, that is a recipe for total disaster. The Bible says now is the time. The Bible says today is the acceptable day. And you and I are not guaranteed tomorrow. Read the paper today. Look at the news. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. And so what God wants you to do is make a decision today. Now somebody say, well, I need to go to church. Well, what you need to do is get on your knees before an almighty, all-knowing God right here and right now and say, Father God, I confess my sin. Uh, I'm sorry I've sinned against you, and, and I want to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior so that he can be my mediator. And if you confess Christ, 
you are saved. He gave his life, shed his blood for you. Uh, do, do you understand the horrific suffering that Jesus Christ endured to pay for your sins on the cross? Do you understand the body of Christ broken, for, the blood of Christ shed for you? You talk about pain. And some people way out there say, well, you know, if God was really good, then how come people suffer? My dear friend, when God Almighty became a human being, Jesus Christ, He suffered. He suffered on the cross. Why? Because He wants you to be fully forgiven. He's your mediator. He's got your back. He's the one that stands beside you and wants you to be found not guilty in the court of law. Well, quick summary. What have we said so far? And we're glad you're watching. Appreciate you watching today. Number one, all of us one day will stand before the judgment throne of God. Are you a sheep or are you, are you saved or not saved? Which are you? If you don't know, then you need to make that decision right now. Number two, Jesus Christ is our mediator. He's the one that stands between us and the judge. A mediator is like a defense attorney who will take you through this judicial process and make sure that you're found not guilty at the final judgment. Number three, Jesus Christ is the mediator of a new covenant. He shed his blood and gave his body so that you and I could be fully forgiven of all of our sins. And we need to spread that, that message around. Number four, repent of your sin and believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says very clearly, if we confess with our mouths that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. Acts 10, 9. And God wants you to be sure of your salvation. And if you look around your family, if you look around at people that you work with, people that you went to school with years ago, or people that you're going to school with right now, if you look around, really look around, so many people are drowning in depression, they're drowning in drugs, alcohol addictions, affair after affair after affair, gambling addictions. Are you think they're happy? Do you think that they have peace? Do they sleep well at night? Do they have peace with God? If they died today, would they be saved? Yes or no? Only God can answer that question. But here's what you need to think about very carefully. Are you positive of your salvation? All you have to do is repent of your sin and trust in Christ. And now, once you've done that, not only do you have peace with God and a new life, but you've got a ministry. And you can help people in your family, people in, at school, uh, people in your church. People that you work with will see Christ living in you. They'll see that light shining in you. And they'll say, you know what? I want some of that for myself as well. The only hope that this broken world has is a mediator. And that is Christ, Mesites, one who stands between us and the final judgment throne. And one who gave his life so that we could have eternal life. That's the good news of the gospel, the word of God for the people of God. And all of God's people said, Amen. Well, thank you for watching the broadcast today. And may God bless you and your family.